Hey, we are Ben and Kira, two adventure lovers who are about to set off on a two-week cycle trip across the Netherlands, Belgium and northern France. We're going to be visiting seven major cities as well as enjoy the beautiful countryside. We plan to stay in tiny homes, on boats and in sustainable hotels, as well as visit a range of eco-projects along the way. We will also be stuffing our faces with delicious plant-based food. So come along with us while we explore this beautiful part of the world. We are on our way to Amsterdam and we are taking the Eurostar to get there. Carrying all of our stuff in tote bags and a backpack each. Hey everyone, so we've arrived in Amsterdam and we are going to be doing three days of exploring here before we set off on our bike trip. We're super excited, we're just walking around, exploring some of the neighbourhoods. Checking out the bakeries. <laughs> yes, definitely. First stop is always the bakeries. Yes. What is it? I don't roll. <laughs> It's a pistachio cruffin, yeah. which is a mix between a muffin and a croissant. This sounds like the most American thing ever. <laughs> but it's good. Yeah. Do you have any advice on how to eat a cruffin? I probably would have taken a fork and knife had I known. <laughs> <laughs> it's like coming out of the bottom of it. But it's amazing. It's pistachio and nut butter basically inside this giant croissant. Does it taste more like a croissant or a muffin? It tastes kind of like a donut, to be honest. Like, it has like sugar all on the outside. We also just had to check out Tony's Chocolate Only, a truly fair trade chocolate company that's actually headquartered right across the street from Conscious Hotel Westerpark. We're now heading to see Amsterdam's central sites. So the Van Gogh Museum was amazing and it's super super windy here but we walked down to Trevi's which is a plant-based Italian restaurant and we are about to stuff our faces. Yes, it's been a, such a fun day. Yeah. There's definitely more bicycles than people here yeah. and you have to be super careful when crossing the road. You've got to look every direction twice. Um, but yeah, love, really cool. Yeah, I love Amsterdam. We could definitely see ourselves living here maybe at one for point. For sure. Like yeah. the touristy area is not for us, but like you can tell that where you can like see where the locals actually live and it's really cool. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> We are on our way to pick up our bikes. Yeah, it's a rainy day here in Amsterdam, but that's not going to deter us. <laughs> so it's our first day of cycling today. And we're aiming to do about 35 kilometers um, just to kind of get out of Amsterdam and um, start heading towards our first destination, which will be Kuchenhof. Which, if you've not heard of it already, it's kind of like the Disneyland for tulips and flowers, and um, it's going to be absolutely incredible. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a rainy day out there, so might be a little bit treacherous, but we'll, we'll take it slow. Um, and yeah, take you along with us. <laughs> Are you ready, Kira? Yeah. <laughs> so the first time cycling with weight on the back. Yeah, it's a lot of weight too. <laughs> but we're gonna make it. It's only a rainy day in Amsterdam. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. go for it. Ready. Yeah. 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 
Take it slow. Take it slow. We've done our first 100 meters. <laughs> How do you feel? Shaky and it's wet and raining sideways, but we're gonna do it. It's gonna be good. So we've done our first mile and although it's very wet on the ground, the bike seems to be gripping well. Um, the back's a little wobbly, we probably need to secure them a little better. Um, but yeah, so far so good. On our way to Blossom Park now, which is home of the cherry blossom trees in Amsterdam. So hoping for some amazing sights. First pit stop. We've got our yogurt and our blueberries. For some breakfast. Oh, it's so rainy today. We didn't pick the best day to start, <laughs> but finally the forecast is going to be no rain for the next 12 days, hopefully. Where are we, Kira? We are at the Blossom Park and they are all in We are absolutely soaked. Only got 40 minutes until we get to our accommodation, so cannot wait to dry off. We found a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> to dry off and shake off under. Oh my God. Crazy. It's, it was really like okay for the longest time. It's like drizzling and now it's just torrential downpour. <laughs> oof, don't, oof, don't, oof, don't. So we've just found our first flower field and it is incredible. The shades of colour next to each other are just incredible. Look at this. Wow, this smells amazing. We made it to our first accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> it was it wasn't far, it was just the fact that it was literally torrential rain. Yeah and mud and our, we were soaked to the bone. <laughs> yeah, I think it was about 45 kilometers or so, well, which isn't bad. No, it's not bad. Um, yeah, very muddy. Very muddy, very cold, very wet. <laughs> so we've got all of our stuff laying out right now underneath the heater. Like a little laundromat. <laughs> we will link all of the Airbnbs that we stayed at in this video and in the description because this one, if this kind of sets the precedent for what the rest of them are going to be like, it's really, really lovely. Like after a day of cycling, you want to come back to this. <laughs> yeah. Today we are heading off to Kukinov to the festival, which is really, really nice. I'm really excited to see it. Um, there's only about a 20 minute cycle from here and it's going to be quite windy, but the sun is out. So I think I can't complain after yesterday. We just arrived at Koikanov. We realized we had been pronouncing it incorrectly and we are in awe of this place. It is incredible the variety of flowers and plants that they have here. We're now on our way to Utrecht and it should be about 70 kilometers to get there. Lots of greenhouses. Lots of greenhouses. Growing lots of flowers. Taking a little snack break. Oh. Even though we're on electric bikes, like this is tough going against the wind. Going against the wind is the hardest part for sure. Yeah, and we're, our batteries are getting down to about 20%. And we've still got about 25 to 30 kilometers to go, so <laughs> by the end of the today, we're going to be. It's not going to be. We'll probably be pedaling. Yeah. yeah, we're going to lose the, the battery. Way. We're going to lose the battery in the next 10 kilometers, yeah. so stay tuned for some crying guys. <laughs> and some soul bugs. <laughs> so the battery is almost officially died, and we're about 20 kilometers out. 
made it if it wasn't for the wind. But the wind and then the weight on the back really slows it down. So, yeah. Now we've got a lot of weight to carry for 20 more kilometers. So it's going to be a lot of sweating. <laughs> Castle, Castle de Har behind us. We never had any royalty live there. It didn't belong to the royal family. It just belonged to a really wealthy family in the area. But it's also the biggest and like most fairy tale esque castle in the Netherlands. And no one from the royal family ever set foot. We are in Utrecht and we are knackered. <laughs> we did the last 20 kilometers with no battery assistance, which I thought would be okay because I've done this kind of cycling in the past, but when it's an electric bike, it's like twice the weight of an electric, uh, of a regular bike, which plus is, all the weight of all of plus, that Yeah, plus all the weight of everything on the back, so. Um, wasn't fun and we somehow managed to find the only uphills in the Netherlands, which were, <laughs> over the bridges coming into Utrecht and we just wanted to die at that point but we've made it, we're happy and this place is absolutely amazing. While we were exploring central Utrecht today we found this amazing sustainable department store and a fully vegetarian and vegan Italian restaurant. We also happened to find the world's largest bicycle garage underneath the Utrecht train station. Our next stop is Rotterdam, which is about 65 kilometers away from here. We are in Rotterdam and it feels like the New York of the Netherlands. Like, look at the size of these skyscrapers. We stayed in these incredible floating tiny homes made out of cardboard. You can find out more about them in an upcoming video. This morning we cycled along the busy port of Rotterdam to visit this amazing project which is improving biodiversity across the city. We will be going into more depth with this project in an upcoming video. Crossing the river through the underwater tunnel, we're now headed over to the water bus station where we're going to take it all the way to Kinderdijk with our bikes. We also happened to see Noah's Ark along the way. We just arrived at Kinderdijk. Sorry if I got that pronunciation wrong, but it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is the place that has the most windmills in all of the Netherlands. So I'm going to do a little cycle around and show you what it's all about. Today we're heading to Zeeland, but on the way we wanted to make a quick pit stop in the beautiful town of Delft. We've made it to Delft and it is a beautiful town. This is the main central area. Kira is currently looking at the blue and white pottery that's famous for this area in the Royal Delft. She's supposed to be the, the original one. Let's see what she buys. Where's she go? Ta da! That's so cute. Isn't that pretty? We had a quick bite to eat before heading on our way to Zealand. So we just left Delft and we are now on our way to Zealand. Um, we absolutely love Delft. It was so, so pretty. Like it, yeah. it feels a little bit like Venice, like the, the Dutch version of Venice. Yeah, and just 
beautiful little cafes and shops and narrow streets and like Amsterdam, what Amsterdam probably felt like like a hundred years ago or something. Uh, really, really cool. And yeah, and now we have a really long cycle ahead to Zeeland, but it's going to be scenic because the sun is out, the wind is on our side finally. <laughs> Let's just hope the batteries make it all the way. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. We are getting on a small ferry that's going to take us over to Zeeland. to a bird observatory that's been designed in a very special way um, and we've heard all about it online and now we are finally here to come and see it. So that structure was amazing. It's called the Thai Observatory, spelled T-I-J. Um, definitely recommend going and checking it out, but it is very remote and you have to go through quite a long marina to get there. Um, but yeah, definitely worth seeing and you can see some amazing wildlife from the windows. Really cool. What do you think of Zealand? Yeah. It's very cute. It's very just rural and farmland and it's peaceful. Yeah. Jumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Jumbo is the supermarket here and this one is the biggest one we've seen yet. Uh -huh. And they have great vegan options. Yes. Like the best supermarket for vegan options in the Netherlands is Jumbo. This is not a paid partnership. We just like snacks. We are almost at our accommodation in Zeeland. We're going to go find our little tiny home. After a long but really beautiful day on the bike, we checked into our little tiny home and this place was great. It had everything we needed and was super comfortable. It's so cute. <laughs> so nice. And then it's got its own little private back garden as well. Hello everyone. It's our first day in Zealand and unfortunately it is rubbish weather. It's windy and rainy and just does not look nice for cycling. So we decided we're gonna take a day off and stay here for an extra night. We have a big cycle day ahead of us tomorrow. Um, yesterday we did 70 kilometers, tomorrow is looking to be about 80, 81. Uh, so yeah, this rest day has definitely been very needed and really, really nice to just sleep in. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we really love Zealand so far. It's such beautiful scenery, very remote, very rural. Um, but perfect for cycling, still huge cycle paths, just like in Amsterdam. Yes. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely be back one day. We're just prepping all of our stuff. And where are we headed off to, Benjamin? We are going to Antwerp. This is how we attach our backpacks to the back of our bags. We get these really long bungee cords, and then we attach them. Basically, you want as much tension on the uh, bungee cords as you possibly can to prevent any movement or wiggling like if you make a sharp turn or you know you just don't want to be cycling and suddenly it flies off the back. <laughs> we may have some rain later so we also have these bike covers or bag covers so that our stuff does not get wet. Yes. Um, it actually works really really well. Yes. Tulips. Pink and yellow tulips. So we're on our way to Antwerp and it's going to be about an 80 km day so with so much weight on the back of the bikes we don't think oh, the charge will make it all the way so we're going to stop in a little town um, just on the border between the Netherlands and Belgium um, and charge up and have some lunch. So many! We've 
officially entered Belgium. Oh, we, we didn't even realise we entered until we saw the car number plates had a B on it rather than an <laughs> NL. Yeah. No, there wasn't. We were expecting a sign. There wasn't a sign. Yeah. So we've been in Belgium for about half an hour now, and the roads are nowhere near as nice as they are in the Netherlands. Like you can tell, there's definitely not been the investment into the cycle paths like there is in the Netherlands. It's it's kind of difficult going around cars and having to go on the main road again, but yeah, I suppose we'll have to get used to it. So we're going to go explore Antwerp a bit. We're in the old town right now. Um, and then we are going to head over to Brussels, which will take about two hours to get to, two and a half hours. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see both cities. We honestly do wish that we had given each city two days. I highly recommend that if you do this trip, give each place two days because you really do need it to see that. We were kind of in a rush when planning this <laughs> and we just wanted to kind of see it all and cram it all in. So yeah, Antwerp is actually really beautiful in the old town and um, there is a lot to see. So yeah, we will be back. Let's make some biscuits. On our way out of Antwerp, we happened to stumble across this park, which is actually the green common space for a sustainable new neighborhood that's being built, with a green energy hub in the middle, and it's surrounded by some amazing examples of sustainable architecture. Okay, so the cycle route from Antwerp to Brussels is dreadful. You've just got to go along the highway. Um, not fun at all. Really do not recommend taking this route. Um, I'm sure there's a, a back route you can potentially take, but um, don't, don't do what we've done. <laughs> okay. We made it to Brussels. And this is our cute little Airbnb that we're staying in. What do we have, Benjamin? We have a vegan waffle with strawberry and cream. So we got there just before a big tour group of like 20 people getting <laughs> so lucky and it's so tasty. It is. We checked out the main sites in Brussels then finished the day with some vegan Taiwanese street food. On our way to Ghent and it's the longest straight road ever from Brussels to Ghent. I think it's about 28 kilometers in a straight direction. Pulling into Ghent. Yeah. Thoughts on Ghent? Beautiful. Love it. Yeah, it's like a fairy tale little village. I love it. Yeah. It's really cute. Yeah. So many people there just chilling by the river and taking in like a good sunny, cool spring day. We finally found a nice cycle path in Belgium. <laughs> We're going along the river all the way. Oh, you okay? I have bee on my leg, sorry. <laughs> We're going along a lovely cycle path which is right by the river going all the way from Ghent to Bruges. So, yes, very happy today. <laughs> Oh, we made it about 20 minutes today without any rain and now we've got about an hour and 40 of just downpour, not fun, but it would have been such a beautiful route as well if it wasn't for the rain, like look at it, so pretty. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. Oh, to be a duck in Bruges. It's a wet afternoon here in Bruges. Well, we're making the effort to go and see the town. And yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's Even really pretty. Rain, it is beautiful. Yes. It's 
Today is our last big cycle day. Yay! We're doing 71 kilometers from Bruges to Dunkirk. Um, we may do a halfway pit stop in between. I think we'll need to, yeah. Yeah, but otherwise we're really excited. I mean, excited but sad at the same time. Yeah. It's been so much fun. Yeah, but the weather's looking great. Yes. Um, can't wait to go on the road. Fighting against the wind today. Even with the electric, it's like ah, yeah. Strong. The battery will probably not make it all the way, so we're definitely gonna have to take a stop off to recharge. Such a shame. If the wind was behind us, we'd probably be getting there a lot earlier than we thought. But you no, know, it doesn't seem like it today. To not cycle from Bruges to Dunkirk, the wind is head on the whole way. We made it. Barely. Barely. <laughs> We are on our way to the ferry terminal now to get the ferry back to England. We are officially back in the UK. Um, so we've had a crazy last few days. Um, God, the cycle from Bruges to Dunkirk was the most difficult day, I think physically, that Ben or I have ever had. Um, it pushed us to the limit, the batteries died, our legs were like, and not even on fire anymore, just like gone. <laughs> um, and but, but by the time we got to Dunkirk, like to see the sea was one of the most exciting things. Like I literally had tears in my eyes. Um, and then yeah, we had a wonderful night in Dunkirk, which was amazing. We stayed in a great place. Um, and then this morning we had to cycle, I think it was another like 23 kilometers to the actual um, ferry port because we took the ferry back. And, like when we got to the ferry port today, it was a super easy check-in process. Um, the ferry was very quick, like two hours, but it felt like maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, and then, yeah, we are now on the train from Dover Priory back to St. Pancras International. So, yeah, we are kind of cheating <laughs> in this last part. If you want to cycle back to London from Dover, be our guest. But otherwise, we are so happy to be back. We're obviously going to cycle home from St. Pancras, we're not that lazy. Um, <laughs> but no, it's been an amazing trip, but we feel like we as a couple have become closer. We've seen so many beautiful parts of um, these three countries uh, that typically, you know, you only go to certain cities to see and seeing things from the countryside really makes all the difference, I think. So yeah, so we are happy to be back. <laughs> 